For now on the program, Amnesty International is accusing the U.S. of committing war crimes through its drone program in Pakistan. A report from the Human Rights Organization lists recent incidents and says there's an almost complete absence of transparency. And the activists have challenged the Obama administration to prove that it has thoroughly investigated all cases of unlawful killings, though there could be an awful lot to look at. The program began in 2004 under the Bush administration. 2006, though, was the deadliest year in his presidency when almost 100 civilians were killed. But in 2008 over here, the use of drones in Pakistan escalated, reaching a peak after Barack Obama was sworn into office in 2009. That was a total of 162 people, though, many of them considered not to be militants. Now, the next 12 months of Obama's administration saw a record number of strikes, 122. And the program continues to take the lives of many innocent people. So we can see the lion's share of drone strikes was indeed carried out by the Obama administration. Around 1,000 civilians have been killed, 200 children, and the total number of deaths is more than 3,000 people. More details now from RT correspondent Lucy Kafanoff. The Predator drone, remotely controlled and heavily armed. It's the weapon of choice in the CIA's undeclared war in Pakistan. That's where the U.S. is believed to have launched more than 300 strikes since 2004. The target, suspected Taliban and al-Qaeda militants. The White House says better drones than boots on the ground and justifies the covert program as both effective and legal. America does not take strikes to punish individuals. We act against terrorists who pose a continuing and imminent threat to the American people. Not so, according to Amnesty International. In a damning new report, the human rights group warns U.S. drone strikes could amount to war crimes. It documents recent killings in Pakistan's northwest tribal areas and the lack of transparency surrounding drones. This is a secret program. In fact, in our case, we've found, at least in some cases, they've clearly killed civilians. And some of these cases might be war crimes. That really concerns us. One such case is that of 68-year-old Manama Bibi, killed by a U.S. drone last October. She was picking vegetables with her grandchildren when the attacks took place, a double strike. The children miraculously survived. First it whistled, then I heard a doom. The first hit us and the second hit my cousin. But her grandmother's body was pulverized. These missile fragments are all that remain. Amnesty documents other such cases, but its main point, the need for transparency and accountability. The U.S. must explain why these people have been killed, people who are clearly civilians. Uh, it must provide justice to these people, compensation. It must investigate those responsible for those killings. The U.S. continues to give very little public information about the drone program, but it will face more international pressure later this week. That is because on Friday, the U.N. General Assembly will be debating the use of remotely piloted aircraft. Now, in a separate report, a U.N. investigation looked at 33 drone strikes around the world, not just in Pakistan, that violated international humanitarian law and also resulted in hundreds of civilian casualties. That report also calling for more transparency and accountability from the United States. Reporting from Moscow, I'm Lucy Kafanov. Now, the U.S. won't shoot itself in the foot with an investigation. That's according to Phyllis Bennis from the Institute for Policy Studies. So uh, she actually wants an international probe into America's ongoing drone strikes. The U.S. has a consistent position in refusing to allow its highest officials, whether political or military officials, to be held accountable for the consequences of wars that are themselves fundamentally violations of international law. International law in the United States, unfortunately, is too often only applied to other countries and not to ourselves. One of the big problems with the drone war is that we don't have good information. It may be that there are war crimes involved if there are uh, decisions made to use drone strikes when other options are available, if decisions are made to use drone strikes against settings where there are known civilians, they may well be war crimes. There needs to be a thorough investigation. And what we've seen is that the U.S. government is not prepared to investigate itself. So the question of international investigations, whether it's in the context of the International Criminal Court, 
to which, of course, the United States is not uh, a member, uh, or whether it's in the context of Amnesty International, the United Nations, other agencies, all of these need to be explored and used.